On today's video, we're gonna talk about the brand new Aparo Tank ADB, and I'm gonna tell you why this is one of the coolest lights I've tried out in a long time. We're gonna take it to the garage, do a little bit of lighting, and we're also gonna use it on a small little car photo shoot. The Aparo Tank ADB is an 80 watt bicolor LED cob light. The temperature range is from 2500 Kelvin to 9999 Kelvin. It has a CRI of 96 plus. It can also be controlled through Bluetooth with your phone using the DeSal Light Plus app. It has nine built-in lighting effects and it also comes with a DC and AC power supply. The Cobb LED chip puts out 20,800 lux of daylight at a one millimeter distance. The light is 80 watts but it puts out an equivalent of 300 watts of tungsten light. You can also control the light output from 0 to 100% so there's a lot of flexibility with how much light you can put out. This light is really compact, lightweight, and portable. The light weighs 0.9 kilograms and if you put a couple NPF batteries on it it'll weigh around four pounds. To use the DC power supply you're going to need two Sony NPF style batteries which are not included but they're a pretty common battery they're used for a lot of different camera equipment and I had a couple laying around if you need to buy a couple there's various packages on Amazon I'll link a couple in the description below so when you get the Aparo Tank ADB it comes in this really nice sturdy case it has a really nice well-made sturdy zipper and it just feels really high quality inside you'll find the Aparo Tank ADB video light an AC power adapter and also the DC power supply slash handle you get the standard style reflector and also this mini little reflector thing, which I'm pretty sure you can mount modifiers to. I'm not... I haven't messed with it much. You can order the Aparo tank from Amazon. Right now they're running a sale for the month of March. So if you want to save a couple bucks, I'll have a link in the description below. One of my favorite parts of the Aparo tank is this bag. It's just such a nice case. So we're at the garage. It's kind of late. Let's get stark out now. We're going to go ahead and give this a test out in the field, aka my garage. Maybe outside since we can use this mobily. For the Aparo tank, you're gonna need some sort of light stand. This one's just one that I had laying around for a long time. It's your typical light stand mount. If you wanna connect it to the light stand, just plop it on, tighten up the wing nut, and there you go. To adjust the angle on the light, it has this little clutch wheel kind of thing, which I think is a really good idea. It just kind of tightens around that. It seems like it's really sturdy. Once you have this locked on, it doesn't matter what kind of light modifier you put on this. I think it's going to be pretty sturdy. Falcon Eyes makes a really nice soft box that I might wind up going with eventually. You can hear that the reflector is a pretty solid piece. I used to have a lot of photography strobes and it always seemed like the reflector was a really cheap piece. Like when you would put your lights in the bag, it would wind up crushing. But this is a really nice piece. Definitely sturdy. It's not made out of aluminum foil like some of those Alien Bees pieces that I used to use. And if you want to put the reflector back on, just go ahead, throw it in the notches, twist it, snaps in, and then you're good to go. The fluorescent fixtures in this garage are just T12. I think they're 5600 Kelvin lights. You can see the Aparo is just ridiculously bright compared to those. I don't have any kind of light meter with me, but the light is super bright. It's probably bright enough to light up this whole garage. I just want to try to mount it to the beams. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe. I don't know. But it's just so bright that we could use it as kind of a spotlight. Now we have it set to 2500 Kelvin, and it kind of looks like it's the sun in the background. It's a nice warm light. So for the 120 volt power supply, it comes with a nice little holder around it. So you can go ahead and throw it on the light stand. That way this isn't dragging on the floor or anything. And then you go ahead and take the other end and just throw it into the back of the light. To turn the Aparo on, you have a simple switch. Then you have two of these push button knob combo switches. By pushing the one on the left, it takes you through the main modes. Twisting the knob on the left is going to affect your brightness and twisting the knob on the right is going to affect your color temperature. If you press the button on the left, that'll take you into scene mode. In the scene mode, you can pick between nine different scenes and you can also change the brightness and the frequency. There's also a setup menu that lets you change the language. It also lets you change the channel for the light and you can also turn the fan on and off in case you wanted it to be really silent. You can also do a factory reset from this menu. There's also a temperature readout on the main screen. It doesn't seem like this light gets very hot, but in case you were worried about that kind of thing, you can monitor it in the main screen. There's also one more mode that can only be accessed through the app, and that is the music mode. It cycles the light through different color temperatures and brightnesses depending on the music. Just a neat little added bonus. So to use the battery adapter, one thing you will need is a 3 8 thread on your light stand. This one is actually quarter inch, but I do have a 3 8 adapter. You can find the 3 8 adapters on Amazon pretty cheap. So then you just take your light stand, screw it into the battery adapter, 
tighten it up a little bit and then you just go ahead and put the Aparo tank on top of the battery adapter. So once you have the battery holder on, you can go ahead and throw in a couple of the Sony type NF batteries. So we're gonna see how this works, how much battery power it actually eats up. Hopefully it's not anything too crazy because I only got two of these batteries, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Then there's actually a battery level indicator on the side of the battery holder, which is pretty handy. And it's actually double sided. I think it's independent. So uh, you can monitor the level of both batteries. Then from there, you just go ahead and plug it into the power supply port. And now we have a super bright portable LED Aparo tank with a lot of different functions. So this is my Nissan Skyline. It looks pretty on camera, but it really needs a paint job. We're currently shooting at a really high ISO. My eye sees kind of like this, which is ISO 5000-ish. So to make the car even visible, we gotta be at like 64,000. So right now we're at ISO 80,000 at 1 50th of a second at F 2.8. That's kind of a balanced look, but we're gonna go ahead and turn the ISO speed down and bring out the Aparo tank and see what kind of pictures we can get. So now we're at the same settings and you can see it is super bright. So we're gonna definitely dial the ISO speed down. That's at about ISO 2000, which is a significant difference. I think we're gonna move the light over a little bit to get more of a three quarter lighting shot, but let's see how that works out. Makes that color look really good, really rich. Let's go ahead and take some pictures. I just had this random thought that this light might be bright enough to use as a fill flash, even though it's not really a flash. Usually strobes are really high powered and you use them for fill flashes during the day, but uh, the weather is supposed to be really bad all week, so I can't even test that, but it makes the paint look really vibrant too, because we got that nice CRI rating. It's a nice quality of light. Man, makes me really like this car again. So with the reflector on, it almost acts as a spotlight. You can kind of see the haze and all the bugs and stuff that float around here, all the dust, and then the car. I'm gonna go ahead and try some of the scene modes just so you can see some of it on video. Like I said earlier, if you have epilepsy, maybe skip this part. I really don't want anybody to have any kind of seizure. Now we're on the heart scene, which is a nice warm light. Kind of pulsates a little bit. Pretty cool effects. And like I said, it's completely portable. I've been out here for about a good 10 or 15 minutes messing around with all the different settings and brightnesses, and we still have full battery power. This is a really efficient light. If I was going on a shoot and using this as my primary light, I think it would bring two more batteries just in case. But if you're just doing a quick photo shoot or video shoot, I really think that two batteries is more than enough. Having this as a mobile setup is so fun that I just keep messing around with it. I kind of wish I had a second one. Doing the one light setup is cool and all, but if I had another fill light on the front that would be really nice another option if you're using this for photography is to do a long exposure or you could do a composite shot so what we're going to do is just take a shot here and then we're just going to move the light to the front then we're just going to take the two shots and composite them in photoshop basically just take the front half of one picture and the back half of the other picture and uh, we'll see how that turns out So we wound up taking even more shots and still pretty good battery life. So I guess on that note, back to the studio. Fan noise seems to be a really big concern with a lot of people as far as lights. And this thing makes almost no noise. You can probably hear a 60 cycle hum of my house more than you can hear that fan. So obviously I'm not a model or anything, but if you were curious as to what a one light setup would look like on the Aparo tank, this is what it would look like. The camera's at ISO 100 at F28 at 1 50th of a second, and the Aparo is at 1%, but it's super bright with no softbox on it. I really wanna get the Falcon Eye softbox because I think that would diffuse it a lot more. We still have the light at 1%, but now it's on the 9,999 kelvin setting you can see it's a lot more of a blue look it might be a cool effect if you're going for something dark or if you want to simulate street lights so the battery indicators are still reading full and i used it for pretty much this entire talking head segment and did all the car stuff and it's still going very efficient i like it good job aparo
I really like this light and I think it's a really great addition to my kit. I'm gonna be using it a lot this spring on some photo and video ideas that I have. It's super powerful and very portable with that really nice case and the battery pack. It's just an overall win. If you'd like to buy one for yourself, I'll have the links in the description below where you can save a couple bucks for the month of March. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. I really need to start hiring models for this. I, I don't, I don't look good. I look too tired, I think kind of fat.